Welcome back to the Dali Talks podcast. I am joined here by my cutie patootie, Rain. Hi. My youngest child. <laughs> and today we're going to talk about kids traveling via aeroplane alone. unaccompanied. Yes, alone. And we thought of doing this um, segment on that topic because before Rain flew across the country all by her lonesome. Uh, we had some concerns. It was nerve-wracking for both of us, but she did amazing. So we're going to start off by asking Rain, okay, first, before, let go ahead and share why you were traveling by yourself. Because um, Nadia couldn't go. <laughs> her sister. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, but but what was the purpose of going? Oh, because you were like, you need to learn how to go alone. Okay, that too. But <laughs> what were you going to do? <laughs> oh, I was going to California to hang out with my friends. To hang summer. out. Uh-huh. And family. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mostly with her friends, though. I mean, realistically, <laughs> right? <laughs> um. Anyway, she still loves them. And it's okay. It's okay to want to hang out more with your friends and with family, especially at this age. Okay. So, um. Tell me a little bit about what were you expecting, you know, uh, out of traveling all by yourself? Um, I don't, I th- I was just like scared. Like I was like, what if someone kidnaps me? And like, I thought there were going to be a lot of people in the airport. Cause like every time that we went before, like there was a lot of people in the airport. Right. And, and I, I must share that rain has been traveling since she was, I believe six months old of course you don't remember but yeah you were six months when I took Nadia with me um and you and we flew across the country that was a a good experience for me actually because you were not the type of babies that cried (laughs) which was amazing good yeah Yeah. so Rain what were your concerns aside from getting kidnapped (laughs) (laughs) Um, um and and aside from going all by yourself what other concerns did you have um I thought that like I wasn't gonna when I got there finally I thought that I wasn't gonna be able to like find the gate or like my bag like I thought I was gonna lose my bag or like that like I wouldn't know what seat I was sitting in luckily it was like open seating for mm-hmm. like I was just really yeah. Wow. Explain what open seating is for those who have never taken a flight before. Um, basically, you can sit wherever as long mm-hmm. as there's like an open seat, right? Um, but the both both the flights that I went on were like mostly full. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and just to to mention, uh, we are in no way affiliated to the airline that we are going to share with you about, but we are gonna share which airline it is only for the purposes of you um, to know, like what their procedures are like because not all airlines are the same so that airline was um southwest yeah and so some people might ask well why southwest well i called my sister who is a southwest rewards member and she's always had nothing but good things to say about it although she did explain that the reward points have kind of like not had as much value lately but um but she still uses them um and she told me that you know they have a fee for kids who are unaccompanied so because she said that I called the airline I was on the website first though but I called the airline because I had more questions so according to them they um they don't require children above the age of 12 to um, be chaperoned. If they are chaperoned, then the parents have to pay a uh, hundred dollars round trip. But not all uh, airlines do that. Some of them require a one hundred dollar one way. So that'd be two hundred dollars round trip. And that's important for you all to know because of savings, especially right now with gas prices, food prices, everything is up really high. So yeah. So Rain, I remember that you were nervous mm-hmm. and <laughs> you asked me to watch some videos with you. 
Um, right. You yeah. want to talk a little bit about that? So um, I do that with like everything that I everything that I do. Like if I'm going to buy something, I'm like, let me see on YouTube, like what people have thought of this, like whatever. Or, like if I'm going to like paint, I'm like, OK, let me check. Like, let me see this person painting or whatever. So because so, it helps me like mm -hmm. understand. So I watched like three or four videos mm -hmm. and like uh, this one lady I was like, oh, like giving tips on like what to pack and what to not pack. And I was like, oh, that's smart. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah. yeah. Listen notes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So did you hear that listeners? She's 14 and getting feedback, getting reviews, getting informed on YouTube, which YouTube happens to be the number one used um, platform for kids and actually adults too. Um, but most people think it's TikTok or Snapchat. No. It's YouTube for kids. It's the mostly used um, platform for looking up for everything, entertainment, research, everything. Um, so, yeah, so we saw several videos, right? Um, some videos I remember were of parents, and we specifically chose, like, reviews for, yeah. yeah, unaccompanied and Southwest, since that was the airline mm -hmm. we were going to use. Okay. So when I called Southwest, they told me, like I said, uh, age 12 or above, they don't need to be chaperoned. So I gave Rain the, the opportunity to choose whether she still wanted me to, <laughs> to pay for the chaperone um, service or not. And um, what that offers you is just somebody making sure that she, your child gets seated, that they get walked to the gate, that they make it to their airplane, that they get their seat, that they don't forget their bag. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pretty much guide them, like hold them by the hand and guide them. But Rain, you chose to go alone. Yeah, actually, I asked like, because I have a, a group chat with like some of my friends. So I was like, guys, I can either go alone or I can go with someone. And they're like, and Abby, she was like, oh, no, go go alone because then you can get like all the food you want. <laughs> <laughs> all the food wait yeah. a minute how is food involved here because like if i'm with a chaperone then it's like more like i don't want to make them have to walk around with me if i'm looking for food oh i see what you yeah. mean okay um that was part of the reason why i chose not to but the other part i was like i'm a big kid i don't need that i don't need a chaperone i'm not 12 mm -hmm. yeah tell tell them your age um i'm 14 yeah, <laughs> yeah. you'll be 15 in november yep. so um, the other thing I would want parents to know is that uh, Southwest told me that when Rain got to the airport that I could ask for a temporary pass to walk her all the way into the gate. So that, how did you feel about that when I told you? Oh, that I was like, yes, I don't have to go through security <laughs> alone because that was scary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was it really? Mm -hmm. Why well, you've been through it so many times? I don't know because I had to go through like the tube thingy and then they had to like. Near, but near. you've done that. So I know, many but it's like I'm alone this time. Oh, like, okay, you know. Well, she wasn't alone. I <laughs> was able to go through TSA. Um, TSA coming back was scary. Oh yeah, because hmm. you were alone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and also because I was wearing those pants with like all the pockets. But the oh. guy was nice. The guy was funny. He made jokes. So yeah, she it. buzzed and she got scared. <laughs> she buzzed going through that through that magnetic, you know, metal detector thing. Um so I walked with her all the way in, found her gate. And I actually went as soon as we got out of the vehicle, I told her she was gonna lead and that I was just gonna like be there in case she needed me. And so I had already explained. When you get to the airport, they have the little kiosk looking things. They look like ATM machines. You can check in there. But because she was checking a bag, a, a big bag that's not supposed to be more than 50 pounds, um, then she needed to go to the counter to turn it in because they put it on the belt and load it onto the, the plane. And so she flew out of uh, BWI or Baltimore International. And <clears throat> yeah, it, walk us through what, what you did um so, like as soon as you left I wanted to cry I was like I need my mom and I was like I kind of regret it really because mm -hmm. because when you told me like she put her hand on my shoulder like this mm -hmm. and she's like mom 
you can go. <laughs> and my heart dropped. <laughs> but I kept a straight face. Could you tell? <laughs> yeah. Could you tell I was terrified? Mm-hmm. I could tell because you kept on being like, oh, it's okay if you're like, I can stay here. Yeah. And she had, um, but you had like a whole 45 minutes left before boarding. Mm-hmm. But anyway, let's backtrack a little though. So you, we get there, you check in at the kiosk and they ask you for your name, your flight information, which you already had on the app. Mm -hmm. The app was great because it gives you updates on the flight itself and you can check in early. And the earlier you check, you can check in as early as 24 hours prior, exactly 24 hours prior to the time that the flight is supposed to leave. Um, So what that does is that it puts you up front for better seating. That's the only benefit to it. You know, um, so we, you, mm-hmm. we after we got through security, like I, we were walking and like I was just following the signs because I forgot what gate it was. But it was like, I think mm-hmm. it was a closer one. But we, like we were walking and I was just following the signs and then I got there. And then actually after I got food, too. Yeah. But the app also told us the gate number mm-hmm. and the flight information. But I still asked her to look at the board you know, the TV screens inside the air, um, airport in case there was a glitch because you cannot always count 100% on technology. Sometimes the apps don't might not update on time. So she checked the boards or the, the screens at the airport and everything was still it's good to go. And the good thing is we also found out that, oh no, it was on the way back, your flight was delayed. Mm -hmm. So that was helpful because then you didn't have to leave as early to go to LAX to get dropped off. So yeah, yeah. what else do you want people to know about getting there? Mm -hmm. Like getting into the plane or like- Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, um, Just find a seat and sit down and (laughs) put your stuff around. (laughs) So, so on that first flight, because you had a layover in Chicago. Oh, yeah. I forgot mm-hmm. about that. So, oh, my gosh. That was so embarrassing. Why? Because, okay, so I went to charge my phone, right? Mm-hmm. And I went to charge it at a bar. I knew it was a bar, but I was like, hey, charging station, and I'm not getting any drinks. Like, I'm obviously not 21. <laughs> and the guy came over and he was like, would you like anything to drink? Like, do I look 21 to you? <laughs> and I was like, um, do you have cranberry juice? Cranberry yes. juice at a bar? Oh, yes. they do. They do. And right? he was like, uh, no, I can, like, oh, put they- something in it. And... Um, I was like, uh, no, thank you. And then um, he was like, you're 21, right? And I was like, really? <laughs> yes. I was like, no, I'm just using the charger. And, like, I'm not going to get anything, anything to drink. And he was like, oh, you got to leave. But I kept, I told him that I was just using the charger. How dare you? And he was like, there are other chargers there. And I was like. So it's for clients only. What like, an whatever. a-hole. Whatever. Wow. Okay. So, <laughs> well. Hmm. I was like, whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Anyway, um, so when you got on that first flight, did they board you first? Uh, no, because I didn't tell them that I was a minor. Okay, yeah. And then when you got to Chicago, did you have a hard time finding your next flight? Um, no, I actually asked the lady. It was like two gates over. Mm-hmm. But I was like, hey, I'm like... I don't know where the gate is. And then she was like, oh, it's just like right over there. And I was like, oh, okay, I can walk to, because uh, they offered to walk me over. And I was like, oh, it's fine. And then the lady was like, no, no, it's okay. I don't want you getting lost or anything. And I was so like, okay. the, the flight attendant from your flight offered to walk you to your next gate? Um, no, like, you know, the people like out, like when you put, when the people who scan your ticket when you go through. Oh, yeah. yeah uh-huh. that, oh, okay. That All right. Well, that's nice. Mm-hmm. And they did tell me that they'll, they would ask you you know, for if you needed assistance, they also told me that um, if, if needed that the child can ask for a ride, you know, on those little golf carts, Mm -hmm. the security officer usually gives people with disabilities or differences um, a ride, but they also give rides to children so that they can make it to their next gate. Okay, so you make it to Chicago, you get to your gate, what happens then? Still same thing? They um, just You just board as normal or did they call you up front? Uh, they didn't call me up front, but I was the first group, so. Okay, because yeah. you checked in early. Yeah, okay. So you spend your three weeks in California. It's time to come back. Um, walk us through, like, 
How'd you get to the airport and all that? Um, so first, we actually, we went to stay with Tia Chris's, uh, can, can I her say boyfriend? Yeah, 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 okay, her boyfriend. <laughs> um, and we stayed in like his little, uh, it was like a tiny little house, it was cute. Yeah, because he lives um, very close to, to and, LAX. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we were staying there and like we watched Stranger Things and then we ate some food and then we left to go mm-hmm. to the airport. And so it was wait, it was still like kind how of how much time before your flight did you leave? Um, like an hour, I think maybe because yeah, he was so close. Because mm-hmm. yeah. normally it's like recommended for two hours prior. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I got there, and Dia yeah, Chris is like, okay, like she helped me get my bag out, and then I have, and then uh, I went through, and there were there was like these group of boys. And they were like just standing there taking photos, and I, and I was waiting. And then I just went. And then I remember what I had to do for the first time that I went. And um, like I I got my tag thing, and then I was like, why isn't the tag coming out? Like I I I wasn't getting the tag. It was just being like, okay, you're checked. Like you're good. You can go. Or whatever. And then I was like, oh, I need to add the bag because it was like add a bag. But I thought I already knew that I had a bag because mm-hmm. like. Why would that not be the default? But whatever. <laughs> I had to put add bag. And then yeah. I was like, oh, is it going to charge me? And then it didn't. And I was like, okay, good. And then I went up. And then I had my old tag. And they were like, oh, you can't have that there. And I started ripping it off. And then they were like, oh, we have scissors. And I was like, you could not have told me that earlier. Um, okay. <laughs> so just for reference, for those of you who have never flown before, um, the reason they put a tag on your luggage is because there's a barcode that gets linked to your ticket. So if your bag gets lost, then they can scan that that uh, ticket that yeah the barcode and and locate your your bag. So that's kind of like you know uh, like a tracking code. And the other thing that you mentioned was um, uh, I lost it. Never mind. <laughs> well. After that, they they were like, oh, yeah, we have scissors. So I cut it off with scissors mm-hmm. and they put it on. And it was 50 pounds. If it had been one more, like, <laughs> I would have had to pay. Oh, that's what I wanted to mention. That um, uh, Southwest allows uh, two, two bags to be checked in and one carry-on. And you have to be careful what a carry a carry-on is considered per airline some of them they consider a carry-on like an actual carry-on luggage and some of them consider a carry-on a purse so be careful because if you have a purse or a book bag and a carry-on luggage then you might get charged extra or sometimes people carry like a skateboard or a guitar so just check with your airline that that item aside from the carry-on luggage is not an extra fee um after that there was this lady who was like looking for where to go to security and um yeah so i i just followed her and then she like went to a different line and then uh i was like and he was like um are you a minor and i was like oh yeah and then he let me through and then the there are two people there was one like behind the 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 thingy and then one in front and the guy was like make sure to check all those pockets like you're not hiding some swift swiss army knife oh this is at tsa okay mm-hmm. yeah. yeah um he was being funny i was kind of mm-hmm. scared though like i was shaking <laughs> um and then i went through the thing and he was like oh you're a professional like you know how to do this <laughs> and then i went through and it beeped because i have my like my zippers and stuff so mm-hmm. the lady was like we're gonna patch you down like you know and then when they when they were ready and like I got my stuff back they were like because my 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 Thea bought me like this this face scrub thing that I wanted because my favorite scent at Bath and Body Works it's actually uh it's a Japanese um oh yeah I know which one because um, that's my favorite too cherry blossom yes. flower things yeah Ooh, we gotta go get you one mm-hmm. yeah. and I brought it with me and they were like oh this like you can't take this unless you have a bag for it so I was like mm-hmm. oh so, so I just to- yeah I just had to leave it on TSA mm-hmm and then when I got to my gate, um, I sat there and I was right in front of a Wetzel pretzel. And I was like, hmm, I should get some Wetzel's pretzels. And then I did it because I was like, because I just ate. And I was like, oh, what? I'm like, yeah, but I really wanted some. And I kind of regret not getting it because I really want. Oh, <gasps> we can gosh. get it when we go to the mall. Today. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> off topic. So and then we want to point out that that flight from LAX back to Baltimore was a direct flight. So there was no need for layovers and anything like that. Right. Yeah. And then once you got to LAX, how did you know where to go for your luggage? Uh, I didn't. 
I just followed the crowd because that's what dad told me to do. I was like, oh, I'm just going to follow these people. Mm-hmm. But but we also said, anytime you have a question, ask anybody, a security guard. Oh, yeah, because like attendant. halfway there, I thought I was just following some random people who like were going somewhere else. I was like, uh, <laughs> where's baggage claim? And they're like, oh, it's down there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, once you came down the stairs to baggage claim, you you, you were actually right at the thing yeah at that thing where yeah your your flight was supposed to um release your luggage but then they ended up moving it to, to the next the next a few a few down um so and then oh my gosh that was so embarrassing i was trying to grab my luggage but it was like behind this other one and this and i was like trying to grab it that young man yeah he was like, so nice because he like he saw that we were both like ah oh, we missed it and he was like nope you didn't <laughs> and he just goes in there because he's so much taller so he had a lot more reach than we did mm-hmm. and he just pulled it out and he was strong because that he what made if- those 50 pounds look so light <laughs> what happens if you miss the bag it just keeps going around so we would have been fine. Yeah, that's why I said, oh my God. That's why I said like, oh, just let it go. It'll come back. But you didn't hear me. It's okay. We would have been fine. Yeah. So yeah. So that was that was her experience flying solo. And now are you gonna feel comfortable going next time next mm-hmm. summer? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Awesome. <clears throat> so how how did that make you feel confidence wise? Um, I was like, oh, I'm just like too like what was I so scared for? Like, I, I don't know. I feel like, oh, I already know how to do that. It's fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. what about the in-flight experience? Um, It was nice, except for, like, in the beginning of, like, when I left from here, um, when I got on the plane, when I got to the to the one on, Ch- on Chicago. Okay, wait. For the first one, I ordered cranberry juice. And the short, the, the flight was, like, only one hour long. So they didn't give me my cranberry juice. <laughs> And then the second flight, I it was I I pressed the call button before they even came around asking. I was like, "Can I get cranberry juice?" And I got it. Anyway, there's a baby crying on that flight, and it was really annoying. But it kept me from falling asleep. So thank but, that baby. Yeah, I remember that poor parent. That poor parent needs to stop their baby from crying. No, I'm gonna cut this out of the video. <laughs> okay, that's mean. Okay, parents struggle. So like, I never Mm-mm. judge parents. Like, uh, where, where were we? Oh there? no, I wasn't. I'm not judging. It's yeah. just like. I mean, nobody likes to hear a baby cry for many reasons, but, you know, it's like you got to just deal with it and you got to remember that they're crying because they're so uncomfortable. It's a, you know, a lot of pressure oh, in the ears. It was that was funny lot, because mm-hmm. oh, sorry, it's a weird sensation in the body because, you know, when I started flying, I had to always turn on that air above me on really high, point it to myself close my eyes and try to relax as much as possible because the sensation would kind of like, it felt like my blood was being drained out of my body. My low, my blood pressure was probably dropping and I would sweat profusely and felt nauseous until we get up to the 10,000 mile, you know, feet um, above, you know, ground and, the airplane would stabilize and once it was stabilized all that feeling would go away so it was really like the first initial what five minutes that it really takes for it for it to like take off and stabilize um and also for me turbulence was really scary and actually still is but that can also get me all nauseous so what about you does the takeoff and landings does that do anything to you no, Your it's satisfying, satisfying to hear my, my ears pop. Like it's satisfying. Ugh, it's so weird. There was a there was a kid like on the flight back from LA to back to here. There mm-hmm. was a kid and her brother, I'm assuming, and she was like, "Oh, like your ears are gonna pop, but like it's fine because it goes away." And he was like, "What?" Like because he he was like, "They're gonna explode." <laughs> oh my god! And, and she was like, Poor "No, kid. no, no!" <laughs> like, <laughs> but they were like five. It was funny though. And you you mentioned that you noticed a, a lot of unaccompanied kids, right? Oh yeah, that was that was embarrassing. <laughs> oh, kids, kids, yeah, kids my age. She's so you're so weird. So every time we go anywhere, <gasps> oh, like, I got to, oh my gosh, <laughs> what? I got to go first on the flight back to LA because they oh, were right. like, because I, I told them that I was a minor that time, and they were like, oh, you can. So go who first. did you tell? Um, I told the the. The, the one guy that was like being at funny about my pants oh I was at like TSA? yeah I was like mm-hmm. oh um well, yeah I'm a minor this is my first and we forgot to mention time. that minors don't have to show ID at TSA oh, yeah that just their ticket and they ask you questions right uh 
Do you remember? Oh, they're like, what's your, your full name? What's your flight number or your flight? Where are you Something. going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. And when, when she's flown with me, they always, you know, I tell them this is my kid. And they always verify, which I appreciate because, you know, they're trying to eliminate human trafficking. So they'll ask the children, like, are these your parents? You know, what's your full name? They'll ask them questions like that. So just FYI. So overall, I would say it was a successful experience. It was fun. And uh, do you feel like empowered in any way? Um, yeah, I feel a lot more confident about it. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I can do that. I'm not mm -hmm. scared to do that. Yeah. And you're willing to go again. Yeah. So next time it should be way smoother. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, Rain, mm -hmm. I'm very proud of you because Thanks. that's a huge leap. It's it can be super scary for some kids. I know it was for you, but sometimes it's even more scary for others. And I'm very proud of you because you decided to go solo. I wanted to give you a choice um, because I, I feel like that's important. You feel even more empowered when you when you choose on your own instead of me telling you you're going to go alone. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, Ugh. and also I think that psychologically when kids have a choice, the experience is different. It's probably better because, you know, you made that choice. Mm -hmm. All right. So any last words? Um, be uh, confident in it's not scary. I promise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like only four years away from 10. So like from 10, basically what? a 10 year old is telling you this. Oh, because you're 14. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if you're like 40 and you're sorry, my voice. <laughs> if you're like 40 and you're like oh my god i'm gonna get kidnapped who's gonna kidnap a 40 year old hey <laughs> you never know <laughs> and but you can get wetzel's pretzels and then defend yourself with the wetzel's pretzels you can sprinkle like the salt on them and then <laughs> in their eyes yeah <laughs> weapon <laughs> assaulted with a <laughs> with wetzel's the salt pretzels. with salt <laughs> oh my god okay mm -hmm. well <laughs> anyway my real advice is to not be scared mm -hmm. it's fine yeah, yeah. I mean, easier said than done. I think that you have to go through the process to realize how not scary it is and how safe it is and how um, airports um, staff, airport staff is, they do have some systems in place to make sure that children do not get lost and, and the airlines too, which is nice because you can ask pretty much anyone, whether it's from your own, own airline or not. Uh, you can ask them for assistance, especially when you say like, I'm in a company minor, they'll go the extra mile to make sure that you get to where you need to get to. And of course, I always recommend it, make sure that your phone is charged at all times until you get to your destination. If your children are um, chaperoned, uh, the airline will need a government issued ID of the person who is picking up your child at baggage claims. So know that. And um, that's pretty much it. So thank you so much for listening. Thanks. Be bold, be brave. <clears throat> Listen to my great outro for this podcast. Yes. Yes. <laughs> don't, don't skip. I can, I know when you skip, I know that you're going to skip this <laughs> no. and you're going to be like, let's skip the ending. Cause who cares? No, that is my voice. <laughs> You gotta listen to my voice because I'm cool. Okay? And FYI, if you need a voiceover person, she's oh yeah, she's a if freelance. you want me to be like uh, your mom, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's okay. it. All right, <laughs> thanks so much for tuning in. Please share this podcast. Please go and give us a review about your thoughts um, about what you, you you have heard, and hopefully you'll hear us next time next week. Bye. Bye. <clears throat>